Ah, check, 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 one, two. I think I'm a pretty rational person. Especially when it comes to money. I think I can remove myself emotionally from purchases like a house or a car. You can do that because you don't have emotions. I have emotions, Lauren. He does not. But when it comes to valuing my free time, uh, I think logic takes a back seat. Say you make $20 an hour. You get offered overtime to come in for an extra hour on a Saturday morning. You're gonna make time and a half, so that's an extra $30 in your pocket. But do you accept? I know I wouldn't give up my Saturday morning for an extra 30 bucks. What about this? Instead, you decide to spend your Saturday morning doing a little yard work. So you put on your grass dyed tennis shoes and you walk out to the garage to pull out the lawnmower. The salesperson walks up and they say that they'll do all of your yard work for $60. Do you pull out your wallet? Probably not. Why is that? If you consider your Saturday morning hours more valuable than $30 by turning down that overtime, then why wouldn't you pay someone else to take care of your chores? I don't have a great answer for that, but I do know that simply calculating your hourly wage and then applying it to all of your free time is neither accurate nor realistic. An hour spent working at your job is simply not the same as an hour spent cooking dinner every night, even though you have to do both. In other words, you'd have to pay me more than my hourly wage to add an hour to my commute to work every day, but I wouldn't spend more than my hourly wage just to avoid cooking dinner every night. And there's a laundry list of things that we do that make no financial sense if you're using the hourly wage formula. On the tippy top of that list is making these videos. I don't even want to calculate it. Just kidding, yes I do. Last month we had a whopping 328% increase in our YouTube earnings, and that was thanks to a somewhat viral video. And even still, we only made the equivalent of about $3 per hour. And you can cut that in half for an average month. Taking care of our chickens had a miserably low rate of return. Uh, we never really kept track of how much time we spent on them, but even if it was just an hour a month, we were saving the equivalent of less than minimum wage. Pretty much anything Mike makes makes little to no financial sense. For instance, we could have bought pre-made fabric covered love letters for the cost of our raw materials. Pre-made sawhorses are cheap and plentiful. Mike spent two days pounding out copper so that he could save $20 on cups for Moscow mules. Side note though, this does not apply to DIY home and car repairs. In fact, on our last repair to the Prius, I made the equivalent of $360 per hour fixing the headlight. But if not by hourly wage, how do we value our time? There's no black and white answer, but there are three factors that we consider when deciding how to spend our time. Will the time spent in question be pleasant, neutral, or unpleasant? I personally find time in the shop working on things like the letters or the copper cups as pleasant, so it doesn't necessarily need to be a positive financial gain. It's something I enjoy. In fact, it can occasionally cross over into the expense category. Alternatively, time spent with my arms in the greasy cavity of a car engine are generally neutral or unpleasant. So they need to be either financially neutral or financially positive. Question two, does the time spent make you a better person? We find making these YouTube videos a pleasant experience. It makes us better communicators, conversationalists, self-aware, reflective, etc. So our per hour earnings are not the motivation here. And finally, does the time spent lead to new skills and or physical activity? In the case of the shop or car or home repairs, the answer is yes to both. Not only are you learning new skills and gaining an overall understanding of how things work and work together, but you're also working up a sweat. And as we know, creating is more rewarding than consuming. So let's go back to the beginning. Is an extra hour of overtime a pleasant experience to better yourself and learn new skills? If it's what you do every day, then probably not. What about yard work? I would say it's a neutral or possibly pleasant way to get some physical activity, so I wouldn't pay someone else to do it. An hour commute is an unpleasant way to get no physical activity. While cooking at home might be a neutral or pleasant experience that might net in some positive health benefits. So we wouldn't pay someone to do it for us. So there you have it. I guess you could have titled this video, How to Rationalize Irrational Financial Habits or Behavior. Or you could just call it Thinking Out Loud to the Camera or Answering Your Why. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Bye guys.